Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Expedition Northwest Passage, where we as players will be launching expeditions to, you guessed it, find the Northwest Passage. Although that's not all, there's actually a few things going on in this game of tile laying exploration. So, here's the situation. Each player is a is an independent expedition trying to find their way through the the uh, chilly Arctic waters from Greenland to find the uh, Northwest Passage. So that's what we're trying to do. But also, as it turns out, there is a very famous expedition, the John Franklin Expedition of 1845, which is famous for having gone off to find the Northwest Passage and disappearing. And apparently, in history, in real life. After this happened, a whole bunch of expeditions were launched to try to find out what happened to the Franklin Expedition. And that's a big part of what we're going to be trying to do. Because in this game, well, there's basically three things that are going on. We are trying to make it from Greenland to the Northwest Passage. And the first player to do it scores 10 points. The second player to do it scores 3. Although this is optional, you don't have to do it at all because uh, there's other ways to score points as well. Second thing you're trying to do is make it back to Greenland. If by the end of the game's 10 rounds you have not gotten your ship and your crew back to Greenland, you will lose points because that crew or every member of your crew who doesn't make it back to Greenland by the end of the game um, loses you two points, I think, per lost crew members. So you definitely want to make it back. And also the first player to make it back, by the way, scores six points. Now I should say with more players, of course, there would be more points for second and third place on both sides. But the other thing that's going on is while we're actually trying to find the Northwest Passage, you know, sailing the Arctic Sea, we are also looking for clues as to what happened to the Franklin Expedition, which is why we can investigate these cairns that may or may not have been left behind by Franklin. We can talk to, um, to local Inuit who might have some information. We can explore straits. We can, what's the other thing? Um, oh, we can also find sites, Franklin sites, where we might be able to find out. Because we can score lots of points for collecting those as well. And uh, that's basically it. So, let's see, at the beginning of the game, we have to put the start marker right here. And what this means, in the first round, you'll notice this, this uh, round marker is kind of unique. It has two halves. The top half indicates that this part of the board is frozen solid it, and you, there is no sailing. The bottom half is where it's a bit more sunny and warm and you can still sail around. Now at the beginning of the game it's put right here and what that means is everything above this line is frozen. Ships cannot sail up here but they can sail just fine down here. And on the flip side we happen to have these little sleds. Our sleds normally can only travel on land, but if it's uh, frozen, you, they can travel over water as well because the water is frozen. Now over time, this is going to move counterclockwise to the summer spot where everything on the board is totally melted and you can move anywhere. But then it starts getting colder and colder towards winter. When it gets here, almost half of the board is completely frozen over and ships cannot move if they're in that upper hemisphere. But then for two turns, two of the ten rounds of this game, almost the entire board is completely frozen. And at that point, if unless our ships are in this bottom row, they can't move at all. And we have to rely entirely on our sleds to continue exploring. But eventually, the sun will come back out and it'll start getting warmer again. And we make a second round and then when we hit here, this is the 10th round, that triggers the end of the game. And if by this point, we haven't made back to Greenland, we're going to lose a lot of points because we're going to lose a lot of sailors. All right, so that's it. I am the first player. Which means the Jen is the last player. She gets first dibs on grabbing one of these tiles. We're each going to take a tile before the game starts. And um, let's see here. I will go, or I'm sorry, not I. Jen, she'll go on ahead and grab this one, yeah, which has a straight on it. So now this means this is a tile that Jen can lay. And when she gets to lay down, this creates another location that players can um, search her stuff. All righty. So, and now a new one comes out, so I'll have access to four to choose from as well. And let's see, oh, here's an Inuit. Uh, so that is, you know what, what the heck, I'll, uh, well, I could grab that one. Hmm, that's really, should I? Yeah, okay, I will. I will grab this one. All right, there we go. All right, and then another one comes out. All right, and now this one doesn't have any bonuses on it. It's just ice and water. Okay, so that's it, folks. We are ready to go. Let's start expediting, expediting, ex exploring. Yes, that makes more sense. Right. So I'm the first player. We're here, and by, and now all the these tiles are 
on the board, there's always going to be these first two cairns in these two tiles, and then there's this tile up here, and then there's the tile we're on. And so, on your turn, you can do any one of these actions, and they, they're all listed right here. They all cost different um, you know, amounts of sailors. And at the beginning of the game, I've got seven sailors here in my supply ready to go. So if I want to draw another tile, if I want to get some more tiles, that costs me one sailor. If I would like to wipe these tiles because I don't like them and then um, draw four new ones, it would cost me two sailors, but I'd get to draw one from a completely new set. Uh, this one, I can pay one sailor to place a tile on the board. I can spend one sailor to move either my ship or my sled if I have deployed my sled. Let's see, this lets me move guys from the ship to the sled and vice versa if they're on the same tile. And at the beginning of the game, they're considered to be on the same tile because the sled is actually being carried on the ship. And let's see, and then these last two are exploring. I can spend three sailors to explore a Franklin site or a strait, or I can spend two sailors to uh, talk to an Inuit or explore a cairn. Let's see, and since I'm the first player, I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to spend one sailor and move here. Simple, easy peasy, I'm just moving. And now it's Jen's turn. I think her first move is she will spend one. This is the ready area. This is the spent area. They're all going to, you know, at the end of her, you basically can't do anymore once you've activated all your guys. And this means they're on the boat. If they were over here, they're on the sled, and they act independently to the guys that are on the boat. But right now, they're all on the boat. Let's see. And so Jen, she's going to do an action. And she, now she can move into the same tile as me, but instead she'll move over to this tile over here. And now this is not uncommon for the game in a two-player game anyway to start this way because there's these two cairns just waiting here to be explored. So I went ahead and jumped on this one. Jen jumped towards that one. All right, so now it's my turn again. And I will spend, as you can see, two sailors to explore a cairn. And I found it. Now, you know, these are basically man-made landmarks, you know, piles of stone that, you know, explorers leave behind. And so we've explored this because maybe it was left behind by Franklin. So, let's see here. And so I get to put it down here, and the number of points I get, well, it can, these can be worth either two, four, or six points, depending on where I got them. When we're in this first section of the board, the big X1 means they're worth two points. Over here, they're worth four points. Over here, if you find them in the final section, uh, before you've, just before you got in the Northwest Passage, they're worth six points apiece. So I just got two points. I'm sorry, yeah, two points for finding a Karen. All right, so that was my turn. Jen, she's going to do the same thing. She will. Um, find this one right here, and so she also got two points. Now, of course, with more players, chances are there will be two players who go and grab these early cairns, and the other players will say, to heck with that, they're just going to rush on ahead. Because, you know, it's a race. The first player over to Northwest Passage gets 10 points. That's a big deal. But there are lots of other ways to score points in this game as well, which I'm going to try and demonstrate as we go. So anyway, so, but we've each done the move, grab cairn, move, grab cairn. Now things get a little bit more interesting. So it's my turn next. I think my next action is... I will spend an action to get another tile. I, now, I have this one tile I got at the beginning of the game, but I would like you can have as many tiles as you want. So I can take any of these four, or I can take any of these little one-by-ones. And by the way, these one-by-ones, these are always in the game. All of these six shapes are always available, but you never know what's going to be popping up over here. I think I'll go ahead and grab this one, which will give me access, or both of us, although if I get there first, I'll get access to another Cairn, which can score me some more points. Right, and so that's Jen's turn. Let's see here. She, meanwhile, will go on ahead and place the tile that she's already got. Now, when you place a tile, it has to be adjacent to the tile you're on. Now, this, and you know, tiles are all either one by one or two by one. Currently, Jen is on this two by one tile. And so, she, um, now she can't go, diagonals don't count, so she has to place it adjacent like this, or like this, or like this, or like this, or like this. Uh, you know, this space is full up, so she has to place it, um, you know, coming out of here or here. And she has to do it in such a way that it lines up with the existing tile. So Jen could say, she could do it like this. That would be totally legal because the water lines up. By the way, I should say every one of these tiles is mirrored. Um, let's see. So you can get this little island on this side or on that side. And I think what Jen's going to do is she's going to place it like this. There we go. And now there's a straight on there waiting to be explored and earn points. And now another thing interesting happened. Jen has now completed or made a complete island here. Whenever, you, whenever a player lays a tile that creates a complete island, they immediately score points for it based on the number of tiles that island has. This island is composed of one, two, three. And so we look over here on this little cheat sheet, and if an island is two or three, it's worth one point. So Jen just scored a point for finding that island. Okay, and now it's my turn again. 
Now, this is interesting. I could spend one guy to move from the tile I'm on to this tile. And, you know, because maybe I'd want to rush and, um, you know, explore this straight first. But here's the problem. These straights, it costs three guys to explore a straight. And I've only got three guys left. So if I used one of my guys to move down here, he would, I would only have two guys left, and I wouldn't be able to explore that straight. So Jen has timed this very well because she has put this thing down that I cannot get. It's always dangerous to lay a tile down that has a bonus because then somebody else might get the jump on you and get in there first and snag it. But if you can time it right, paying attention to how many actions, well, you don't have to worry about that. And so, so I could move down here to Jen's new tile, but I won't, I mean, because Jen, she's got four. She can move in and she'll have three left over to get that. So I guess what I will do instead is I will, I will soldier on. I'm going to pay a guy. I'm going to lay my first tile. And what the heck, I will lay a tile like this. There we go. Okay. That's legal. Everything lines up. And there's another Karen to be found. Alrighty. And as you can see, I am close to completing this island. This island has one, two, three. One more tile here, and this will be a four tile island, and I will score two points for discovering it. Okay, and there's a Cairn waiting as well. So now at Jen's turn, she will spend one to move here, as predicted. And now I will... Let's see, actually, it would be kind of nice if I... Oh, oops, oh, by the way, when I grabbed my last tile, I forgot to put a new one out. Oopsie doops. And, oh, it was another one with a... With a, with, a, with a straight. But you know what I'm tempted to do? I think I'm going to spend this guy and I'm going to grab this tile because look at this. This will let me finish off this island so I can score some points off it. So I grab that and I forgot a new tile comes out. And there's an Inuit on there. And so now Jen, she is going to spend three, count them, three guys because it takes three guys to explore a straight and she just grabbed this straight. Okay, she puts it over here, and now straights are worth one, two, or three points, depending on where, what area you find them on. But for straights, Franklin sites, and um, what do you call them? Uh, islands. Oh, by the way, I forgot. Jen, when she found this island, she got a little navigation marker to indicate that. So, um, for the straights, the Franklin sites, and the navigation points, not only do you score points immediately when you do them, but there, there's uh, whoever has the most of them at the end of the game scores a lot of bonus points. Whoever comes in first on straights scores 11 points. 13 points for whoever has the most Franklin sites, 9 points for whoever has done the most navigation. And as well, for each complete set of all five types of marker, which includes the Inuits, the, you know, if you have one of each of these at the end of the game, you'll score six bonus points. If you have two of each, you know, that's 12 points, or 18 points if you have three of each. So, in addition to the mad race to get all the way over here and score, be the first to score 10 points and make it back, we're also in a mad race to try and get majorities of the various types, or, you know, either do set collection and majority collection for the different types of bonuses we can find that give us more clues as to what happened to Franklin. All right. So anyway, so that was Jen's turn. Now I've got one more guy and I will go on ahead and I will place this tile here which um, revealed another Karen oh, oh wait a minute oh shoot I told him this is not a legal placement look this line doesn't line up oh darn it shoot 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 ah oops I did not look closely enough Right. Well, you know what? My last guy, instead of placing this, my last guy is going to be devoted to moving from here to here. I'm going to start pushing west, young man, or I don't know if it's north, young man. Um, is there a north, south, east, west on this board? I don't see one. But regardless, I'm, 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 I have moved farther from Greenland. I am making a race to get those 10 points. So I have moved further. That was my last guy. Now it's Jen's turn again. She doesn't have anybody else, so she has to pass. And now this is interesting. The first player who passes becomes first player for the next turn. So Jen passed, and now I'm done, so I pass, and now turn order has changed in the second round, which we are going to indicate like this. This marker moves from here to here, and now it's summertime. Every single tile on the board um, is unfrozen. Previous, this tile was frozen. You couldn't sail up here, but now we can sail any place. And we're about to start the second round, so we reset. Everybody's ready to go again. Do, 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 do. And uh, we've got our sleds ready. And I, I've kind of taken the early lead. Although, you know, Jen's definitely doing better in points than me. She's got majorities on these two things. But I am closer to... So we'll see how that goes. But you know what? 
that's just literally the tip of the iceberg. Apologies for the uh, for the pun there, but there is so much more going on. I've just gotten started. Uh, the interesting thing is, as the time moves on and we start getting into frozen winter time, things get very interesting. We have to leave our ships behind and start exploring by sled. And that can be a really dangerous thing because if our guys get cut off, if they can't make it back to the ship, then they could be lost forever. So there's a lot of really interesting stuff that goes on. And if you'd like to watch a little bit more, you can hit the button that's on screen or follow the show notes to my extended playthrough or alternatively, you can go to Final Thoughts. Your choice in 5, 4, 3, 2, one.